Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at some services that you can use to replace some of the services that will no longer be in use with macOS Server. Uh, so if you haven't heard already, I did do a screencast on this talking about how Apple is deprecating its server services. And so it's getting to the place where it will be getting rid of pretty much all of the services out of server with the exception of open directory and profile manager. And then, of course, the users and groups that go with that and that sort of thing. But uh, all the other services will need to be replaced if you want to continue using them. So I want to do a series on how to do that. Uh, I've been out a, a little bit, so I've been a little behind on my screencast, but I will be catching that up hopefully here pretty soon. I've got some uh, other events and, and vacation stuff coming up. I had some kids graduate from college, all that, uh, not college, high school and all that good stuff, so I'm still catching up, so just so you know. But I will definitely be coming out with some screencasts to help you with your conversion and also just some other uh, stuff that I'm interested in, uh, like I said, with home automation and that sort of thing. So stay tuned. Just want to let you know that I haven't fallen off the planet, but uh, things are coming out a little bit more slowly as I'm working this through. Uh, so anyway, so what I want to do today is talk about how do you replace DNS. And so here in the server application, we have DNS sitting here. And so the DNS service is what uh, allows you to do lookups for your server uh, in terms of converting uh, numbers into words like domain names and that sort of thing. And so with it going away in Mac OS server, how do you keep that going? Well, I came across uh, an application called DNS Enabler. Uh, one of the things that's difficult is a lot of the uh, software packages that Apple refers you to to use DNS uh, don't have a nice GUI to them um, so that it's a little more difficult to work with. And so what I did find is one that does have a GUI and so I got access to this and a few other applications that I'll share with you uh, and the developer Bernard was uh, really nice in putting putting these things together and uh, sharing a little bit of it. So uh, and I'll put the web address on there as well so you can find it. So here we are, this application is called DNS Enabler, and it does what it says. It basically enables DNS on your server so that you can use, or on your Mac, so that you can use the DNS server that's built in. So it's just accessing what Apple displays over here, but it's doing it in a different window so that you can continue to use it. So let me show you how that works. So we're running DNS Enabler for the first time. You can see it's for High Sierra. He does come out with versions for each version of the OS so that you can see those and download them. Uh, I believe there is a cost to them. I don't know. If it's, I think it's maybe uh, $15, $25, somewhere in that zone. Uh, so you get a serial number. And so when you launch this for the first time, it asks you for the administrator name and password as well as the serial number for the application. So I've put all of that in there. So I'm just going to click on Login. And so now it's going to log me into the app application. So this is DNS Enabler, and as you can see, uh, this is what the actual uh, window looks like. So what I'm going to do is show you how to convert things that you have over here in DNS over to DNS Enabler. Now one of the things is that there is not an easy export import feature in it. Uh, the developer uh, just uh, wasn't able to put something like that together. So we are going to have to manually move things over uh, before you uninstall your server and all that sort of thing. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So right here is where you would put your domain name. Now the domain name is the same as the primary zone right here. And you can see I got my primary zone down. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in here because what we want to do is transfer that over. So I'll put that in here. Okay, now that we've got our domain name typed in there, you'll notice right here we can put in any virtual domains that we may want to use. Uh, you know, things like, let's say, you know, do, uh, example A.com, example B.com, that sort of thing if you're using virtual domains. Uh, we're not really using that here in our DNS that we have set up. But, you know, if you wanted to set something up with another domain that's not uh, the main domain name you're setting up, virtual ones, you can set that up in here as well. Uh, the other thing we have here is forwarders, and that's very similar to what we have over here with our forwarders. So if I just click Edit Forwarding Servers, you see I get this drop down, and you can see right here I've got my Open DNS uh, forwarding server. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that. Um, actually, I just have to type it, so I'll just copy it over here. Let's go ahead and put that in there. And what this will do is this will perform lookups that your server can't do itself so that it will go on the outside so that lookups on the internet and that sort of thing will happen through these forwarding servers. And you can put these with a comma and put as many down as you want. In our case, I'm just going to leave that alone. So I'll just click cancel right here so that pops back up there and we're going to leave that right there. 
Uh, here you can put in the host master's uh, email, right? Uh, you know, steve at domain.com or whatever, so that someone could contact you if they need to. Uh, right below that, we've got allow recursive queries from outside subnet. Uh, recursive queries are allow you to resolve other people's domains. And so if you've got another subnet that's using that or some outside subnet where you're using recursive queries, you check that. Uh, if not, you can just leave it blank. And so in our case, I'm going to leave it alone. Now, it does allow dynamic DNS uh, updates as well. And so for certain services like DYN, there is a built-in updater uh, that's right here. Uh, so again, if I click this, you get some information on it. You see, I get this drop down and this is the actual updater for uh, DNS enabler. It's, it's called DNS agent. And so it'll keep your dynamic domain uh, address updated with your domain server uh, as long as you're using one of those services. And so in this case, I'm going to not use that. Uh, I have shown you how to use something like DNS broker uh, to do that as well in a previous screencast. So you can use that as well. But just wanted to show you that this is available. Now here I need to put in my primary name server. And so what this is, is this would be the actual machine record. So if I come over here and I just hit this triangle, there's our machine record right there. It's our A record. And so that's what I want to put in here. So I'm just going to come over here and copy this. And we're going to put this in here. Okay, so there's my machine record. I've got that all set in, in there. Uh, the other thing I can do is I can do a secondary name server if I wanted to as well. Let's say I've got a secondary uh, server that I'm using, and I want this one to be the primary. I want another one to be the secondary. I could put that name in here, export these uh, DNS records, and then install DNS enabler on that other server, and then import those records. And then instead of selecting the primary, I'd select the secondary, and then it would function right from there. So that is really nice that you can do that rather quickly uh, right here with this uh, interface. So just wanted to let you know that that was there. In our case, we're not doing that, so I'm going to leave that alone. Now, you'll notice down here is where I've got all of my host name information, and that's where I start putting that stuff into my DNS enabler so that I've got these records copied over to here. Okay, now let's go ahead and add the host name and add some aliases and different records in here. So what I'm going to do is just hit the plus, and so I get this line here. If I just double click into here, I'm going to put the domain name. In my case, it's going to match what I have up here because I'm not using any virtual domains or anything like that. So I'm just going to put this in here. So I've got that all set and ready to go. So I've got that in there. Now I come over to the IP address. And so in this case, I want to go ahead and put the local IP address in here that I've got. And so let me go ahead and put that in here. So I've got my local IP address, and now I can start putting in uh, aliases or C names. I can put in MX records for email or text records, uh, TXT records, that sort of thing, and I just separate them by commas. So I'm going to copy what's over there over here. So the first one I need is I obviously need uh, the server one, so I'm going to put that in there and put a comma with a space. Uh, so I've got that covered. I've got www that I'm using there. I may want to use something else as well, like let's say FTP. And let's say I want to put FTP in there so I can add that in there. Uh, if I've got a mail server, I might put mail with another comma. And again, it's going to create records for each of these with, with those words in front of whatever my host name is. Uh, the other thing I can do is I can set up uh, MX records as well. Okay, now let's go ahead and add the host name and add some aliases and different records in here. So what I'm going to do is just hit the plus, and so I get this line here. If I just double click into here, I'm going to put the domain name. In my case, it's going to match what I have up here because I'm not using any virtual domains or anything like that. So I'm just going to put this in here. So I've got that all set and ready to go. So I've got that in there. Now I come over to the IP address. And so in this case, I want to go ahead and put the local IP address in here that I've got. And so let me go ahead and put that in here. So I've got my local IP address. And now I can start putting in uh, aliases or C names. I can put in MX records for email or text records, uh, TXT records, that sort of thing. And I just separate them by commas. So I'm going to copy what's over there over here. So the first one I need is I obviously need uh, the server one. So I'm going to put that in there and put a comma with a space. Uh, so I've got that covered. I've got www that I'm using there. I may want to use something else as well, like let's say FTP. And let's say I want to put FTP in there so I can add that in there. Uh, if I've got a mail server, I might put mail with another comma. And again, it's going to create records for each of these with, with those words in front of whatever my host name is. Uh, the other thing I can do is I can set up uh, MX records as well. Now for MX records, I just put uh, big MX uh, capitalized there. And then what I want to do is use the uh, square brackets here and just put a priority. 
So in this case, I'm putting 10, you might put 20, you might put, you know, 30, whatever, but that would be the order of priority. So there's an MX record with a comma. And then I can use a TXT if I want as well. I just go TXT. And then I just do a bracket again. And let's say I want to say something like location. I want to put a text file with the location of the server. And let's just say office. And then I close the bracket and there is a TXT file. So now I can go through and just add as many different host names as I want to add. I could do it for virtual domains. I could do it where uh, I put something in front of it. Let's say, for instance, let me just hit a plus there. I want to do something where I want to put something for own cloud or whatever. I might put cloud dot my uh, domain name. So I put that in there and then I put another IP in there. Something like that. And then I can go through and put whatever I want in here as well in terms of MX records or whatever I want to put in front of it, that sort of thing. Or if it's a virtual domain like this, I'm just going to leave it blank. I don't need to put anything else in there. And I'm all set and ready to go. So that's how you would set up your records. So you're just going to transfer these records over to here in terms of your primary zone. And once you have all that set, then you should be ready to go. Now once I have this up and running, I just click on Start DNS and it will start the DNS server. It will also show me a log and I can reload all the information if I want as well. Make sure you turn off the DNS service that you've got already so that you can replace it with this one. So for instance, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the DNS service over here so that that's offline. And now I'll come in here. Let's go ahead and hit Start. It's going to ask me to authenticate. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And so it's going to start the service. Now it says one of the host machines needs to be made the primary name server. And so it says this one can't be found uh, in the list uh, of host names. So I need to review my data. And so I've got to make this one of my hosts. So what I need to do then is come back in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, copy this. And I'm just going to change the number on the end. To five or something like that and then what I'm going to do is hit the plus here come in here and we'll put our server name in there paste in the uh, name there and we'll go ahead and hit start again and so now it's starting the DNS service and you can see it says restart now so our DNS service is running and so we can see our DNS log here and you can see that it's created all the different zones uh, that we need there uh, for the different general zones that have been logged and it shows you all of this um, and there were some errors again because I am running this on top of the one that I've already set up just to give you a demonstration I can always reload it from here as well but up here in help you can deinstall uh, DNS enabler right here if you want to do that I can also check for updates here or revert the information to default so I'm going to go ahead and uh, just click on deinstall. Um, so if I did that, well, I'm going to leave that alone. But if I click on deinstall DNS enabler, it's going to deinstall it, take care of everything, put us back exactly where we need to be. In fact, let me just go ahead and do that so I can show you what it looks like. It says, you sure you want to do that? It's going to halt the name servers and all that. I'm going to say, yep, we're going to do it. And so now it's deinstalled it. You can see everything is back to normal, and I have the option to start DNS whenever I want. So that gives you an idea of how to use a service like a DNS Enabler, how to use this application. Again, a real simple interface that you can use. You can do much more complex things with this if you want to do that right from this interface. But I just wanted to show you how to take your DNS out of your server, convert it over to DNS Enabler. Then when you um, basically uninstall your server, you, can, you have all your DNS records ready to go, and that's how you would replace that. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.